Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Sham, Rakhakwadash, Yahweh being the name of Heavenly Father, Baha Sham, and the name Yahweh Shai being the name of the God's Son, Rakhakwadash, Holy Spirit. Double honor to our elders and apostles, the great most from the well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and above all. And this lesson is going to be going into the fear of the Lord triumphs, man. Okay, when you fear the Lord and you reverence Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, with deep fear and respect, that is going to make you triumph, man. <clears throat> Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 23, 27. And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the Lord and that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. It is a great, it is great glory to follow the Lord and to be received of him is long life. That's right. You see, so the point being what? That there is nothing sweeter than to take heed to the commandments of the Lord. There's nothing better than the fear of the Lord, man. And it's going to lead to great glory. You see? Sirach Ecclesiasticus 19 and 24. He that hath small understanding and feareth Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. That's right. So it's better that you, you know, have more fear of the Lord than the knowledge within the scriptures. Okay, now having knowledge within the scriptures is important too. Don't get me wrong, but that just goes to show you how important it is to fear the Lord. Scripture says it's better that you just have a little understanding or small understanding in the scriptures, but yet you have great fear in the Lord, man. That makes you better than someone who's very wise in the scriptures, but yet still goes off, man. Because the scriptures talk about how there is one that is profitable and teacheth many. Yet is unprofitable to himself. This is Sirach Ecclesiastes 37 or 19. There is one that is wise and teaches many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. That's right. You don't want to be a hypocrite in this thing. You know, like the Apostle Paul also mentioned in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, meaning you're having discipline over your body. Okay. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Right. You don't want to be a castaway in this thing. You don't want to be wise and teaching many yet being unprofitable to yourself, man. You want to apply what the, the, the knowledge that we're learning. You want to practice what you preach, so to speak. In other words. Sirach Ecclesiasticus. <clears throat> Nineteen twenty-four. He that hath small understanding and feareth the Most High is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. That's right. That's the point right there. So it's really better for you to fear the Lord, man. Fearing the Lord makes you more honorable than a lot of men. Okay. This is uh, Sirach Ecclesiasticus um, ten, and I'll start at verse. 18. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. That's right. So we're not supposed to be proud and we're not supposed to have furious anger. Okay. Scriptures talk about how the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the Most High. And also, scriptures all say pride is the beginning of sin. That's in the same chapter, Sirach the 10th chapter. So when you're proud, Ultimately, that's a lack of fearing the Lord. You know, and the scriptures also say, be angry and sin not because when you're furious, you have furious anger. You can go off because of your anger, man. That's why it's important to keep our emotions in check. Verse 19, they that fear the Lord are a sure seed and they that love him an honorable plant. They that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. Okay. 
And the scriptures talk about how no liar have any part in the kingdom of heaven. Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable, right? So when you got, you know, the chief brother, he's honorable, right? It says, so are they that fear the Lord in his eyes. The fear of the Lord goeth before the attaining of, of authority, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. That's right. So when you when you fear the Lord, that's going to put you in a position of authority. But when you have roughness and you have pride, you're going to lose that position because pride is the beginning of sin. And if you fear the Lord, you don't sin. You know, you flee from sin. Like it says, flee from sin is from the face of a serpent. Surah Ecclesiastes. Twenty one and twenty and one. My son, has thou sinned? Do so no more, but as pardon for thy former sins. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, for if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. All iniquity is as a two edged sword, and the wounds the wounds whereof cannot be healed. That's right. So that's why you want to stay away from wickedness. Because it's like a two-edged sword. And sometimes if you go too far off, you get destroyed without remedy, man. That's why it's important to always fear the Lord. Surah Ecclesiastes 10. And verse 22. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the fear of the Lord. It is not meet to despise the poor man that have understanding. Neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. That's right. So really, our glory is the fear of the Lord. We don't glory in the fact that, that we might be noble. We don't glory in the fact that, you know, we're rich. We don't glory in the fact that, you know, we have might or wisdom. We glory in the fact that we know Yahweh Bashmashai and we fear him and we do that which is pleasing in his sight. And in return, he gives us he gives us riches, might and wisdom. You know, and you got people who despise the poor man that have understanding. You got people who despise the men of the Lord, but they they magnify sinful men. They extol them to the clouds. But the Lord said that that's not convenient to do so. And it's also not meet to despise the poor man that have understanding. Verse 24, great men and judges and potentates shall be honored. Yet is there none of them greater than he that fear of the Lord. That's right. So ultimately, the fear of the Lord triumphs. You see, that's the point on that right there. OK. Uh, let me see. Now. Let's get the next one. Let's go to the book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes 25. Starting at verse six, much experience, Sirach Ecclesiastes 25 and six, it says, much experience is the crown of old men and the fear of the most high is their glory. That's right. And guess what? It goes all the way down from the ancient men to the young men. The, f the fear of the most high will be our glory. That'll be our treasure in these times, man. Because when all hell is breaking loose, the fact that we fear the Lord, that's going to keep us stable because the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when we have the wisdom, Yahweh Shemashai, that's going to be able to deliver us from all these different calamities, man. Scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. As well, when you read Wisdom of Solomon and you read about what wisdom did, what wisdom has done and how wisdom has delivered our forefathers, then you will know that that's because guess what they all had in common? They all feared the Most High. Ver, I'm going to skip down to um, verse 10, Sirach Ecclesiastes 25 and 10. Oh, how great it is, it is he that findeth wisdom. Yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. That's right. That's right, man. There is none above him that feareth the Lord. So fearing Yahweh Bashmiel Shai is what triumphs.
verse 11, but the love of the Lord passeth all things for illumination. So the love of the Lord is ultimately keeping his commandments. And it's going to say, it says what? Passeth all things for illumination. I'm going to show you that it's brighter than bright. Okay. The, the scriptures speak about how um, Isaiah 8 and 20, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Talking about the, the, the commandments of the Lord, and that comes from fear. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Right. So if you want to be illuminated, you want to be enlightened, you want to be, uh, you know, spiritually um, shining. You must take heed to the commandments of the Lord. Let me see. Get this real quick. Because that's going to make you enlightened. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And that's the that illumination. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. That's right. And what do they say? Godliness is cleanliness. Cleanliness is godliness, right? The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yeah, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. That's right. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Right. Because sometimes we go off and we don't even know we're going off. That's why we pray to the Lord constantly to have mercy and to show the Lord that you want his mercy. You got to fear him and do what he's telling you. Because the scriptures say it's better to obey than to sacrifice, man. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. That's right. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O, o Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That's right. We want to have control and discipline over our thoughts and over our mouths because that as well can get us into a, into a jam if we're not using it all rightly. Okay. All right. Now, this is Sirach Ecclesiastes 4 and 11. Wisdom exalteth her children and layeth hold on them that seek her. Right. So it says wisdom exalteth her children. But when you go into it, where does wisdom stem from? Wisdom stems from the fear of the Lord. So ultimately, when you fear the Lord, that's going to give you wisdom. And when you have the wisdom of the Lord, that's going to exalt you. You see? So the we the 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 fear of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai is ultimately what triumphs. And there's plenty of scriptures going into fear and wisdom. It's Job twenty eight and twenty eight, and unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Psalms one eleven and ten, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. So if you before you get wisdom, you must fear the Lord. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endure forever. That's right. And when you do the Lord's commandments, that makes you depart from evil. The scriptures speak about how the fear of the Lord uh, driveth away sins. Okay. Because when you fear the Lord, you do that which is pleasing in his sight. According to Sirach, the second chapter, around the 15th verse on down. Verse uh, Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's right, because why? They don't fear Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Proverbs 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 15 and 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. That's right. So before you get the wisdom, you got to get the fear. And before you get the honor, you got to be humbled, man. See? Sirach Ecclesiastes 1 and 14. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. That's right. 
Sirach 1 and 16, the fear of the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits. That's okay. And what's a part of wisdom's fruits? Being exalted above your neighbors. So wisdom triumphs, man. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, which are the gifts of Yahweh Shai, and in the larger they're rejoicing that love him. Sirach Ecclesiastes 1 and 20, the root of wisdom is to fear the Lord and the branches thereof are long life. Verse 27, for the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness are his delight. That's right, man. Sirach Ecclesiastes 1918, the fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. Right. So if you want to be accepted of the Most High and his son, you must fear him. The scriptures speak about um, him that loveth me. He, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. Scriptures also say him that loveth me. All right, we'll keep the commandments and he shall be loved of my father also. Roughly paraphrasing. So Sirach Ecclesiastes 19 and 20, the fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. That's right. And the knowledge of his omnipotency. Okay, right. Because when you fear the Lord and you get that wisdom, then you start to tap into the Lord's omnipotency, his all powerfulness. And guess what? He will bestow that power upon you. But in order for you to be worthy of that power, you must fear him first. With great power comes great responsibility. That was a quote from the Spider-Man movie. But the scriptures even backed it up. To whom much is given, much is required. So if you want much in the spirit, you got to put in much. Scriptures say, he that sow sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that sow bountifully shall reap bountifully. Galatians 6 and 7 also says, be not deceived. The most high is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap, man. Now it says, uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes 21 and 11, He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth understanding thereof, and the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. That's right. Absolutely. So that's the point, you know. Um, <clears throat> I believe that the point was made. Lord willing, this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Chakudash, that will honor to all of us and apostles, the great Muslim, and well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and above all.